I'm Richard Bainbridge, and this is the Great British Chef's Signature Series. Food has to be yum yum. That was one of the lessons I got taught from Michelle Bruce Senior at the Waterside. And food is only yum yum when you're feeling happy and content and enjoying yourself. You never want to be that person at the bottom of the stairs with a gin and tonic crying because the roast dinner is messed up. You know, I remember walking past Benedict's years ago thinking it was quite a posh restaurant that I wish I could go to. And now I own it. I mean, how cool is that as a journey? Everyone's got a story about a BLT, about a prawn cocktail, a volibon, you know, a cheese and pickle sandwich. You know, all of these elements are what we can use as chefs to connect with our, our customers or the people who are sitting around our dinner table at home. So today we're going to be making the ultimate BLT. Now to me, this is a dinner party showstopper. You're taking the idea and the humble idea of a BLT and we're going to jazz it up and give it some real modern oomph. So it's going to be lots of fun. And like I say, this is a dinner party showstopper. The first thing we need to do with this dish is make the batter. So what we need to do first of all is take egg whites, pop them into our machine. And what we need to do with this is we need to whisk it up. So we're going to stick that on a medium to fast heat and speed. You don't need it so quick that it's all gonna crazy and mix everything up. Let it come up nice and slowly. That's on a nice medium speed and we're gonna let that go to stiff peaks. Meanwhile, we're gonna take our other ingredients. So first of all, we've got some egg yolks. It's gonna pop in. So then we've got some nice plain flour. Goes in as well. And then we've got some beautiful raw cream. So pour that in as well. And then we've got some melted butter. And like I say, we're gonna end up with this real kind of thick paste, but then lighten it up with the whipped egg, egg whites. So all I'm gonna do now is season it up before I mix it with a little bit of salt, some white pepper, and then we've got some um, barbecue seasoning. Um, so this one is Old Bay, so it's a real classic American seasoning, but you can use cayenne, paprika, get some chili flakes in there coriander, onion, onion powder, so lots of different flavours go in there. But again, just a small sprinkling. So we're just going to start to fold that all together and make a paste. This dish is a typical um, snack that we would serve at the restaurant. So something that really connects with people the moment they sit down. You know, when you go into a restaurant sometimes, you can feel uncomfortable, you can feel anxious, you can feel nervous. Giving somebody something that they can instantly connect with makes them feel relaxed, make them feel as though they're in my home having dinner. And that's really important to us at Benedict. There's always a way, and I was always taught as a young chef growing up, how you check them whether egg whites are ready. By looking at them, you can start to see that they are holding themselves and they do do what they're supposed to do. But what I was also taught is that you always got the youngest person in the kitchen, normally my daughter, and you turn them up and make sure it doesn't fall on their heads um, like that. And that is exactly what you're looking for. And we're now gonna start to incorporate these in. But the most important thing, when you're taking two very different um, materials, one being very light and fluffy, one being very dense and thick, is to add things slowly. So we're just gonna take just a spoonful of our egg whites first. And we're going to beat this in. Just going to keep going with that until it's all well incorporated. Once this is all now well incorporated, we're looking for a consistency of a fluffy Yorkshire pudding batter. So now, again, we can now be a little bit more gentle about moving these together. The mix now has just all been well incorporated now. That egg white is all incorporated in, and we're now left with this nice light looking batter, almost like a runny cake mixture. We're now going to let that rest whilst we now go on to talking about our pork shoulder. So now we're on to our pork, um, for the barbecue pulled pork in the middle. And this is the whole pork shoulder, or pork butt, like I say. You kind of see on the backside here, this is where the ribs then start in, and the shoulder muscles, the shoulder blade is inside here. Barbecue to me is a real kind of getting back to basics. We're like primitive ways of cooking, is cooking over fire, cooking over coal and wood. If you haven't got a barbecue, and you want to still make create the same um, flavour, it's fine. All you need to do is preset your oven to 120 degrees. Then what you would do is wrap it in tin foil, pop it in a nice oven tray, which is big enough to hold it, with a cup full of beer or cider or water, 
and let it cook in there for about 12 hours until it wants to, you go to feel it and it's just wanting to fall apart. All you need to do when you get it, don't be overwhelmed by it. Butchery is one of those things that people get overwhelmed with really quickly. You don't need to, especially when it comes to this, because all we need to do, like you've already seen I've started to do there, is take the skin off. If you leave this on, it acts like a massive piece of cling film wrapped around the meat. You can't get the flavor in there what you really want to. So just using a nice sharp knife, we're gonna just start to peel this away, like that. And you're just left with this beautiful pearly fat. Pulling that skin away whilst I'm doing it is really important as well. So we just pull that away and we're just starting to slice that skin off. But again, I'm doing long strokes. I'm not jigging at it to then, you know, leave it all on there. We're just gonna start to just bring it away. Pull this off now. With this, again, don't waste anything. This looks quite big and quite gnarly, and what would I do with that? That is pork scratchings written all over it, incredible. So don't waste anything. So in here, we've got brown sugar, and we've got smoked paprika, um, we've got sweet paprika, we've got chili flakes, um, we've got dried onions, and we've got dried garlic in there as well, and we've got some fresh thyme. So not too many flavors going on there. I wanna still keep that main flavor of the pork, but also we have to be realistic. We're gonna do a thin layer over the top and underneath. And this is a big piece of meat for that to kind of all take on those flavors. So what we're gonna do, take this, just lib liberally just rub it all over the pork. And because it's got that brown sugar in it, a beautiful sweetness, which works really well with pork anyway, but it starts to caramelize on the outside. So it almost makes another little crunch on top. So I just wanna make sure we get it all completely covered in. Turn it right over. So be quite liberal, let it kind of all fall down because you really want to get those flavours all over it. Then get a nice big oven tray. And then if you wanted to now cook it in the oven, you'd now wrap this in tin foil, pop it in the oven at 120 degrees until it's fall apart, or let it sit for five or 10 minutes whilst you just sort out your barbecue to cook off. So I'm now gonna go and get that on the barbecue for later on. Pork has now been cooking for about 12 hours, depending on what size you've got, either in a barbecue or in your oven at 120 degrees. And all I've done now is let it cool down and pick it off the bone um, and shred it up so we've got that traditional pork, pulled pork um, texture. This is great to have cold as a pate and, and kind of, you know, put it, roll it up and slice it off and have it as a pate. But what we're using it for to go inside um, the pork bun makes me really excited because this is mind blowing. It's like, this is amazing. This is like everything that you want in something which is a bit filthy, but still quite refined for be paper, people to be able to enjoy in a suit, in a cocktail dress. So this is all mixed in there. We're gonna mix it all together, like so. And then for this, we 20 grams I've realized is about the perfect size for our pans and what we need it for. So just take the pork itself, squeeze it in between your hands and just make a nice, fairly dense ball. Probably, yeah, that's about 20 grams is what you're looking for. You can even get these made, pop them in the freezer as balls and bring them out as and when you need them, um, which is another great one. So we've got our little balls there. We've now wrapped them all up. Now they're all ready to go. Our batter's now been sitting here resting for the last 10 to 15 minutes. So that's now ready. So we're gonna get ready to make our buns. So now we've got on our traditional Scandinavian pan. Um, which has got some beautiful half half semicircle um, divots in there, um, and we're going to now cook our batter in there. So just a tiny bit of oil. If you can't get one of hold of one of these pans, you can try and use things like a Yorkshire pudding tray. Get it nice and hot on the stove top, and do the same kind of process. So get it nice and hot like so. Now take our batter that's just been sitting there. Spoon in our first mix. So what we're going to do now is we're going to slowly use it. I, what I tend to use is a nice needle or something like a cake tester or something like so. And you want to start to move it to make sure that it's set. So we're not getting far off now. And now we just slowly like that, move them around like so. And so now we're starting to form that ball. And that batter, as you can see here, is starting to set on the outside. So now we've got it about three quarters of the way round. We're going to add a tiny little bit more of our mix, just like a teaspoon now. I'm going to take our balls, pop 
pop them in there. Let them, don't be afraid that they all kind of get a little bit messy like that. The needles are great because they move. You know, you can really kind of, instead of trying to use a palette knife or anything like that, they move around. And you can move it quite easily without messing and breaking up your product. They're all completely sealed. We'll just pop a tiny bit more oil on top. So what we've now got, as you'll see, they're just this beautiful sphere, like so. When we now pop it into the oven, that pork is gonna warm up, all them flavors are gonna move into that, that batter, and you're gonna end up with this beautiful inverted BLT. So, these have now been in the oven for four minutes. So two minutes, turn it over, two minutes. Now, they're quite robust. You know, that's exactly what we're looking for. Nice and golden all the way around. Dead to the touch. So now we're just gonna season these with a little bit of our Old Bay Spice again. Go over the top. And this just adds a tiny little bit more heat on it. So just to dress this, all I've got is some sliced baby gem, which has just been seasoned with a splash of lemon juice and salt and pepper. And then we've got some barbecue sauce. This is our own elderflower barbecue sauce that we use. So we're just gonna pop a little bit of the barbecue sauce on the bottom. Now get our baby gem. Don't be afraid to just to crush this in your hands, just to get a nice, almost like a nest is what we're trying to make for our pork bun to go on top. So pop that in the middle. And a dot of our sauce on top. And then what we've got here is just some dried tomato slices. So these are just thinly sliced tomatoes. It just dipped in a savory stock syrup. But we're gonna just pop that on top. And to me, these are all the flavors that you would expect in a BLT, but we've now made this the best party snack that you'll ever be able to give anyone. So there you have it. This is my ultimate BLT.